Good evening and welcome to the Pink and Show here at the Bullpack on Golden Bull Street in Norwich. We are here to bring you all our dedicated Norwich City shenanigans. Oh, my phone's making a noise as we watch it too. Uh, yes, dedicated Norwich City shenanigans uh, that hasn't checked whether Alex Pritchard is still in the basement after last week. Uh, we probably should do that, really. Uh, I am Michael Bailey. Over the next 30 minutes or so, we will bring you all the key City discussions from the FA Cup draw at Chelsea. Reflect on the latest January transfer rumours. Go, Pritchard! And look ahead to Saturday's Championship Clash uh, at Bristol City, of course. High-flying Bristol City, as I'm uh, calling them uh, now. Uh, we'll see if any Woolpack regulars uh, fancy accosting us during the show. Uh, plus, we've got City fan site royalty with us tonight in the shape of a long come Norwich podcast host, Tom Parsley, and my football writer, columnist, Steve Cook. Gentlemen, how are we? Well? Very well, thank you very much. Excited about the transfer activity. Indeed. What, just talking about it or it actually happening? The fact that we're in the window. We, we wait for a few months for it to come round and I enjoy it every time it's here. Really? I enjoy how tired <laughs> it makes you. Yeah. Oh, it's like walking around in circles constantly. It's good and dizzy. Steve, how are you? I'm just enjoying the relocation to the new studio, which is uh, a step up, I think. I mean, who would have thought that a pub would be better than a studio? I, I actually imagine? would, because if you come to the wall pack, um, you will see uh, it's actually 25% off uh, food and drink for the next uh, week until the Sunday the 21st of January. So you've got a little bit of time. Uh, we've got free drinks for, for saying that. Um, but get yourself down here. It's lovely. They are, mate. It's all right. Brilliant. Well done, Tom. Top work. Goodness me. Lucky, lucky Wolfpack. We're going to come back. Clearly, we're going to come back. All right. We are uh, live uh, at... Uh, you have to put the tally lights on, Dad, because I don't know which camera I'm looking at. Uh, we are live at uh, Pinken.com, possibly, although we're on a slightly different feed. Uh, we are definitely live on the Pinken Facebook page. And, of course, we want to hear from you, too, uh, be it on all those January rumours, Farkas formations, or robbing the Robins. Get your questions, comments and banter into us uh, through to us here at our pub table. Uh, all you need to do is post your words on the Facebook page and they will ping right through to my phone, which may have been on uh, not on silent earlier. Now, uh, with more recent appearances to her name than her namesake, uh, Wesley Moulahan is here to help us ring in the latest Norwich City headlines. Ready, Steve? Go! Well, blue who to you too. Strike a light city, hold Chelsea to book FA Cup replay and give the Pinken show a week off. Steve. We've run out of Pritch puns. Yes, another week, more Pritchard speculation. Nothing agreed as yet, I believe, but clearly Huddersfield are pushing pretty hard to sign the wee man. Nazy on a free, literally. Stephen's family is back in Scotland and a move away is on the cards. The reports say he, has, he would even take a pay cut. He's a good bloke. It just seems such a shame that it hasn't worked out. Murphy's Law involves a carrot. If City topple Chelsea next week, why wouldn't they? Then a visit from Newcastle awaits and the chance for Josh to take on Jacob. Now that's one for the neutral to get behind next week. Losing a bit of impetus there, Steve. Good luck, good luck, boys. Derby visit Carroll Road for Friday's FA Youth Cup fourth round tie with City's under 18s. We'll be there. You should pop along too and cheer on the next generation. And finally, better. Uh, they think it's all over. Next Thursday sees the Norwich City Fan Social Club host an evening with former City heroes Jamie Curitan, Brian Gunn, and Bill Punton. It's three pounds adults, one pound for kids, with doors open from 7 pm and a raffle for the Community Sports Foundation. It should be a cracker. <laughs> Nicely done, Steve. Well, you did go out on a high, literally a high ring. It was good. Uh, gents, we will get into the speculation soon, so just hold there for a bit, uh, Tom, if you can manage it but I did want to talk about uh, Chelsea first because that game has it left you with the glass half full or half empty because lots of different views on, on how it went and on all that sort of jazz half full in the defensive aspect half full in us keeping the ball uh, rotating the ball and being mildly more entertaining to watch at times than we have been recently but for me, still exactly the same problem that we have had for the last few weeks, which is creating far too few chances, um, not repeating good things that happen regularly. Um, the good creation of chances we had in the first half, at no point in the second half did we then see, OK, well, let's try that again. That worked, down, down, that worked well down that wing. That worked well when we had that triangle going. Let's try and do that. We don't seem to be able to repeat any good things from game to game. And... and that, that's my biggest concern. It just seems to be a complete lottery as to what the result might be from week to week. 
I've heard, I mean, I've heard views that says it shows that Farker's style of football suits the Premier League because we've competed against the Premier League team. And I've heard views saying, well, it was a weakened Chelsea side. And I think for me, it's neither half full nor half empty. It was a good defensive display against the strong team. There is no such thing as a weak Chelsea side. They're a side full of multi million pound international players. But as Tom said, symptomatic of the season we didn't create very much and and yet we looked solid and put in a decent performance so you know one of those neither nor lots of positives to take but I wouldn't I wouldn't go overboard we have a replay now which is very exciting or, or it was until maybe everyone found out it was going to be 30 quid to go 6,000 tickets and now that it's live on the BBC I'm not entirely sure that Norwich will be able to sell 6,000 tickets or get anywhere near it. I don't think it's going to be like the Emirates where they're going to have to release another another set again uh, after them all being snapped up. Um, it's, it's terrific that we get a national audience to watch us pass side to side when we have the ball. Um, I, 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 I can't help but think that whilst Chelsea really didn't want that to happen, they didn't want to replay and um, it's something you picked up on, you know, Cahill telling the, the Chelsea lot interviewing them after the game that it was a flat performance and, and they, didn't re- they didn't try hard enough. I don't think that will be any issue I think we'll probably be brushed aside and um, that's one of the reasons why I'm not going to make the, the trip but even though the Murphys could play each other what a carrot that is I mean Josh will be going spare this week surely it's uh, I mean I saw they tweeted straight afterwards yeah. with their goggly eyes going same thing Ooh. Ooh, it's almost like they're connected somewhere <laughs> I think just picking up on the point about pricing Credit to credit to Norwich actually for getting it right this time. Was it 15 quid for adults, five for kids? And they probably learnt a lesson from last year against Southampton. But 30 quid to go to Stamford Bridge, nah, it's not for me. It either. was the best atmosphere actually for for a while. Um, which, bearing in mind people were shuffled about and in different seats, etc. Um, there were some quiet periods of the game, uh, but generally, actually. There's something that we've covered a lot on the podcast is the atmosphere and, and, and actually I, I felt it was pretty good and that the players were with the team partially because we were holding a, a, a Chelsea team and, and playing you know well in terms of keeping up with them um, but, but yeah I, I felt I felt quite positive about the atmosphere there and I, I, I thought maybe the, the majority of fans maybe were going to start to get a bit impatient but the performances like that are going to keep them on side a bit longer. It's interesting that because I mean, what, what was that with the atmosphere? I know that the occasion sort of probably suited it, but also you had, dare I say it, 23,000 people who'd paid for that ticket and were happy to be there. I mean, that sounds harsh, but. Oh, it makes you wonder how many of the normal season ticket holders actually didn't choose to go to that game. Um, and maybe it was a bit of fresh blood, fresh impetus, players coming, or new kids coming along to, to see the game. and and just enjoy it for what it is because as a season ticket holder myself I know that on occasions I go down there more out of habit than out of genuine desire to go to the game and you sit there and as you say watch the ball getting knocked side by side and maybe sometimes we do need a fresh a fresh pair of eyes to look at it I don't know okay well um, James Coleman's been in touch he says he uh, it was buffering and he missed points two to four in the headlines uh, don't worry James and everyone else uh, the show will be on the YouTube channel in full uh, shortly after we finish by about half past eight so you can watch it all that 25% <clears throat> don't push it oh, we, maybe, well, we might get a second drink maybe get some food that's, that's why we're doing it's my it my lethargic bell ringing as well on points two and three sorry and it was there. two to four was a low point you, you, you pulled it around after that Steve so that was okay uh, right so yeah keep your questions please coming in we'll rattle through them as we go along although I, I haven't needed to ask any yet because they're probably going to be involved in this uh, it's at this point uh, where we do usually get stuck into the reaction from Saturday's game but with January in full swing uh, we'll save the time for chatting about that instead so therefore head over to the Pinkin YouTube channel and of course Pinkin.com where you'll be able to catch up with all the post-match reaction on Saturday from Daniel Farker uh, Jose wrestler Antonio Conte and City winger Josh Murphy might even be a bit of uh, Gary Cahill there as well Uh, but of course as I said let's get full-blown stuck into this Dan I think we're good to go we're good to go. Thanks, Dan. Top work. Uh, yes, it is uh, January. Uh, it's already been a bit nuts. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, we're not even halfway through the month, uh, yet there's already a lot happening, or certainly in terms of speculation, there's a lot of speculation. Not always the same thing. Uh, gents, I'm going to hand this over to you. Who do you want to talk about first? 
Well, I think it makes sense to cover Pritch off first. Um, he's obviously been the biggest story of the window so far. Um, 11 mil total, maybe a little bit more up front and some add-ons and bits and bobs seems to be what's on the table at the moment from Huddersfield. Perhaps they're going to hold out for a little bit more. Um, for me, at the moment, I'm delighted that we're not dealing with one of those situations where the player's pushing to go and um, there don't seem to be those those noises coming out of the club that you know he's handing in a transfer request whether that'll still happen in two weeks time if Huddersfield haven't met the <laughs> haven't met the requirement we don't know but f- for me I, th- I think he's an example of a player where you couldn't hold it against him if he moved on he joined us at a time where he thought we would be upwardly mobile um, we had parach- all the parachute payments in front of us um, we thought we had stability from the management point of view the managers changed we're no longer on that upwards trajectory there's no sign of promotion you could not blame him in the slightest for having the opportunity to play in the prem I-, I can't imagine for one second alex pritchard in a really quiet moment doesn't just go why not join brighton because at, at that point it was so it was so close i mean I, I, I think it's pretty clear Alex Pritchard would like to go to Huddersfield and I, I believe that's the case because it's a great move for him and I'm sure he will make sure him and his representatives and everyone that everyone's aware that don't keep me here I want to go and play in the Premier League which is, which is a fair point I think they'll want 12 million quid would you sell him for 12 million quid Stephen? That's interesting. It's, um, it's difficult isn't it you talk about valuation of players and on the one hand you've got someone like Coutinho at 145 million Ross Barkley and I know he's at the, coming towards the end of his contract he's, he's 15 million and I have no idea how clubs value their footballers. And I, and I can understand why so many fees are undisclosed because there doesn't seem to be any rhyme nor reason to it. I think genuinely, looking at the reaction from a lot of City fans, they think that 11 or 12 is on the light side. But at the end of the day, the valuation is only what, what clubs are prepared to pay. There's an interesting thing I was thinking about here as, as well because we had Jacob being sold for, say, I think it was 10 million initially in the summer. And that almost sets the benchmark, doesn't it? And, and bearing in mind Norwich have got other players that they're probably going to want to sell in future, clearly James Madison, for example, it's going to come round oh, to that if Norwich don't get promoted. They kind of want to make sure that bar- benchmark keeps rising so the clubs don't think they're a, light, a soft touch. I think one of the reasons it's not being... Re- being received with such negativity is also a few people are thinking oh thank goodness it's not James Madison if you see what I mean you know not, not only because they are similar players in terms of where they play but I, I think there is a there is an element of relief that okay we accepted that maybe we had to let one of them go this window most of us probably would have chosen Pritch to go over Madison simply because we all thought it was more realistic to hold on to Madison a little bit longer I think the ceiling personally anyway I think the ceiling of Madison could be a lot higher than Pritchard and I think they would because of his age definitely hold out for an absolute minimum of a few million more I, I, I cannot believe that they would entertain especially this in this window at least I would be surprised if they had any concrete offers because everyone would be clear that with so long left on his contract and the fact he's only just broken into the championship regularly I think that he's at least another window away from even getting a serious bid that would be close to what we'd ask for him it's probably interesting with Pritchard as well. He's probably on a lot more than, say, Madison, but on a, a fair whack given the timing he, he arrived. Uh, Stephen Tilney, he says, surely Pritchard is worth more than £11 million. Uh, Gareth Moore says, get out while you can, AP, and put, yep, three exclamation marks. So there we go. That's pretty, pretty, pretty he, really, he really does mean it. He really, he really does mean it. Um, so it's, it's interesting that Tony Bisham uh, Farker told the board he doesn't want Pritchard to leave, so he is staying. But ultimately, Daniel Farker probably doesn't really ever say it. It's going to be, it's going to be, Webber, and it's going to be the board who make the, the decision in the end. And of course, it will be influenced by what Pritch wants to do. And I think just picking up on Tom's point is like, Pritch was only likely to be here for one or two seasons max in terms of being a Championship club because when he signed, it was it was on the basis that it would give both the club and the player the opportunity to return to the top flight as soon as possible. And I think you might have interviewed him after the Brighton game last time and it was like, you know, any regrets? And he's like, no, no, because we'll get promoted next season. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as that's unlikely, you think, well, it was always going to be when, not if he, if he goes and where we are. So. I think he probably would have only been with us for a couple of seasons even if we had got promoted I think he's the sort of player who is always going to look good in a team that's playing well and always going to look because of where he plays and the type of player he is and I think he's always going to look good in a team that's playing badly because of his natural ability and so I think if we were in a if we'd have gone up at the end of that season uh, and been relegated again 
I think he would have stayed in the Premier League, similar to a kind of a Redmond situation. But once they get to that certain age and they clearly can cut it in the Premier League, which I, I, I believe no doubt that he can. But, but you say that, but I mean, here, this is a player, for all the talk of like 15 million plus, you think here's a player who failed to break through at Tottenham, and I know they're a, they are a top side, but being taken off the yellow and green specs, you'd kind of go, all right, Pritch hasn't, you know, he hasn't demonstrated a lot in the Championship, A, because Alex Neil didn't play him, and B, because of now injury. And so you sit there and go, we can all see that he's an absolute gem. But dispassionately, you might think, well, other clubs would go, well, OK, is he Premier League? I mean, he also had a loan at West Brom in the Premier League where he didn't really do a lot either. Spurs will probably have some sort of sell-on as well, which maybe Norwich will have to factor into account. And the curious thing for me is, where's everyone else? If Alex Pritchard is a player that's decent value in the Championship that Norwich are probably open to selling, why is it only Huddersfield? Uh... I don't know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I God damn it, it may it, it may well be that there has been interest, and the fact that Huddersfield have put their have put a firm bid in so quickly has basically put some people to the back of the queue. Um, I would be surprised if there hadn't been any interest, any phone calls to Weber at all. Um, but actually, w- w- what's happened is because it, re- realistically we are still quite early in the window, which is why you're, you're so miserable because uh, you've got to cover it. <laughs> I love it. How dare you? Yeah, that, that, that's a lie. Um, it, it's uh, keeping an eye on, on Sky Sports just in case we can break yeah, something. Yeah. Um, uh, and I saw the big yellow banner come out, so I thought, oh, here we go. But no. Um, <laughs> Arsenal Chelsea again, like last week. Ridiculous. So I, I think. I do think there probably have been other suitors, but the fact that Huddersfield have made their intentions pretty clear to go from a five million to an eleven million bid in what two days, <laughs> you know, that does suggest not only how silly that first bid was, but also I think there is an element of other other clubs probably think, okay, well we we've made inquiries, but okay, you look like you. I think that's the other reason why it is a good move for him is they have such a. Uh, a specific need there you know it, it is a position where they have they don't have a number 10 in that way they um, they've got a couple of good wingers that uh, I can't remember the chap's name who scored that screamer in the first couple of weeks of the season he's like that big lad up front but yeah that's it that's it yeah but he's got um he you know if having someone just behind him they, they haven't really got that success there um knockout plays slightly further back doesn't he I mean he's still a creative player still a kind of 10 but he's more of a mid central midfield player whereas most of the other teams in the champion uh, sorry premiership in the bottom 10 who would be in the market for maybe Pritchard most of them have got an attacking midfielder in the mould of Pritchard whereas with Huddersfield you feel that as long as he hits the ground running he could be a first team of just kind of full, you know ongoing and that's another reason maybe why other people have gone okay it fits better than he does here I would agree with that entirely uh, Simon Meadows given the given what the no, let's see what you two think of this given what the club have gone on record as saying this transfer window selling key players like Pritchard would be a betrayal of trust to us fans is it i'm not i'm not entirely sure i mean i, I don't really recall them they saying we will not sell anyone we'd have to trust we'd have to trust the club first for, <laughs> for them to betray it um, and and i don't trust any uh, multi-million turnover business that's trying to run a business um, to, 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 to stick to the same things twice but I, I personally don't don't feel like they said i don't feel that i saw anywhere anyone promising us Pritchard wouldn't be sold they said we're not under pressure to sell but every player has their to, price we don't yeah, that was the line wasn't it we don't have to sell um and therefore but i think farker actually said in his conference obviously every player has his price and so you know he wasn't going to discount any players leaving if there was a big offer i mean i i'd be gutted to see Pritchard go because for me i would have built my team around him but you caveat that on the basis that you know, again, he's a player with Premier League aspirations and probably the talent to get there. I mean, I remember writing that probably about five weeks on the trot at the end of last season. The problem is he got injured and we never really got the chance for it to happen because it may well have been the case and exactly what Daniel wanted to do. Uh, let's step away from Alex Pritchard, finding he's not sold in the next 20 minutes and um, get stuck into it. I mean, we'll have to see. We don't really know where it is. It, it is where it is at the moment. Um, Tim closer to Basel, that got mentioned. I think it's a bit of a, if they sell someone, they might want Tim kind of thing. It's his hometown club, he'd love to play there. I think that's you know, one of those things in the back of his head. Keep hold of him. I wrote, I wrote a piece uh, recently <laughs> about who we go. For me, if you are going to cash in, close is one that you probably could because with Raggett returning or coming back from Lincoln, Zimmerman's looking the part, Hanley increasingly looks assured, and you sit there and you think, actually, the pressure at that position is is now off. And as I say, I don't, I don't know what his value would be, um, but you think as, as one of the more prized assets, you probably could get a few quid for it. It's as much... Uh, transfer value but more so maybe the wages he's on as well which is all going to come home to roost in the summer assuming Norwich don't go up it's assuming yeah if we don't go up um yeah and likewise his value whatever it will be will be more now than it will be in the summer 
Um, yeah, 100%. He would be at the top of my top of my list, just just behind Nelson, in terms of what I think you could, yeah. how we could rebuild with the money we got, or how we could settle up other financial black holes, so that we don't have to sell Madison and play, players we really want to keep. I think you also look at how we uh, how we got beasted by Morrison and I think last season by Murphy, and actually, although he's a really quality cent- he's a quality centre centre back against those typical English centre forwards in the championship he, he can get exposed actually so. I, I think he's so so I, mean, I really do think he's so so like there's there are just as many mistakes that he makes as, as anyone else in, in, in the team in the squad over the last couple of years um, he's okay in the air he's alright playing out from the back but neither would you say unlike Hanley who you say well he puts his head or his foot on anything he loves defending that's clear that's his thing um, likewise with um, Pinto you go oh he's really fast That he's a really fast guy What? there isn't one thing that like, closer isn't a type of defender or anything he's just like I think in my humble opinion he's a so-so defender and therefore I think we could quite easily replace him with who we've got in the squad I think we, I think we benefited early on because Zimmerman basically had a senior partner next to him who could kind of put him under his wing so to speak and I think now with Hanley's emergence you kind of go actually it's less important now to have that figure there you go Tim you've been written him. off you yeah, sold, sold him, him. Uh, he's of course got a World Cup to look forward to possibly if he sorts himself out between us not, not that there's a problem with him <laughs> but you know if he gets some uh, top flight football somewhere you never know that could be in the back of his mind he's told me before it isn't as simple as that but there we go. Uh, I did have Naismith and, and Russell Martin down on here, but I feel like you know we know where that is as it is, so let's leave that alone. But I do want to talk about Nelson Oliveira because um, would you sell him? 100%. 100% sell him. All right. Well, well, we have Pete Rogers sat there in that chair. In fact, two million quid. He said. I wouldn't go two million quid, but only but only because of the market. Um, about five years ago, he would have been worth that. I. I I don't like his attitude. I don't like how hard he looks like he is to manage. I don't like the, um, I don't like the greedy runs that he makes. Um, I don't like. Um, it happened in the Chelsea game. Um, he, uh, uh, Murph was on. The, Murph had the ball. Um, was looking to get his head up and, and do something. And all of a sudden, Nelson's on his toes. Um, and Murph is like, "Well, I haven't got an outlet. I haven't got anywhere to run. Like, I need you to take this player away from me so that I can go one on one with with Rudiger, whoever it was he was up against." And, and Nelson just goes and stands in stupid places. He takes up the wrong position when it comes to crosses. I, I think that I think that we can probably get more money for him yeah. than. I think he's worth at the moment because of the market because people will always gamble in January on a striker and again quite a lot of wages that we can get rid of and I would quite happily see us go for a, a maybe slightly unproven or up and coming and, and roll the dice there because he's not finishing loads and loads of goals so I don't really he will get probably the same number of chances created as Nelson i.e. not very many whoever it is that comes in and replaces Nelson um, I would if if we can keep I know there was some talk of Cam that doesn't seem to be around as much as it was um, I would much rather have Cam as a squad player generally he's fantastic at defending set pieces Cam when he's on, on the pitch works his socks off all the time not as fast as he was but I, I, ju- I just feel we wouldn't get very much for Cam so we need to freshen it up up front. I would do it this window. I would sell Nelson to the highest bidder if that's. I think we might get five for him. You know, do you think? I think we might get five for him in the, in this window. Yeah. I think they could get. More. I think I they think could even with all this. They could get more. I think they get more. What would you? So you'd you'd take five? I, I w- I'd be disappointed with five, but I could see it happening because I I think that I see it so much in the interest of the club to let him go. Which, which is roughly what they paid. So it's yeah, not like it you know five, it was five and a half. I think. I, I, I because because I because because I don't think it's a right fit anymore, and I can't see it becoming a right fit either with the type of football we play, the number of chances he needs. We need. We, I think because we we. We're not really a down the wings and cross it in taught a team. Height is irrelevant. We're not a bang it forward, hold it up. So height is irrelevant, strength is irrelevant. So um, I, I think someone in the, in the mould of a, like a Bobby Reid or a Shane Long, you know, a smaller stature type player, wily, pacey guy who can get in behind. And well, it, was, it was interesting watching Murphy play up top against Chelsea and see the different dynamic that he gave you, that sort of player with pace and, and, slight, and in that game he was more direct and running at players but I agree with you, Oliveira looks like someone who's difficult to manage, difficult to play alongside. I saw him um, 
the last league game where he actually took the free kick off Madison and it yeah, was like more like, so, so I was out I'm going to take this yeah sorry it was that Millwall game it was that yeah. Millwall game where he, where he came and got in the way of, of Murphy yeah, he didn't, didn't play the and again, game. it was just like no I'm having this free kick and promptly he stuck it over the bar and you think he's, he is a player who you know maybe all centre forwards need to be a bit greedy and a bit selfish but you look he looks like a player that's out for himself but he's doing it to the detriment of the team so the, run, the runs he's making and the way that he the way that he moves up front is preventing better chances being created because he's crowding um, the players who are trying to have an open up yeah, room yeah, to put the ball across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he did hit the top of the river end. So, I mean, credit uh, credit where it's due. That's credit that's where it's due. Eight million then. We salute you. That. Yeah, <laughs> awesome, Nelson. Well done. Um, that's great stuff. Uh, we've got loads of questions co- uh, coming in here. Let's have a look at some of these. Uh, Craig Matlas, selling Pritchard for £11 million would be, he says is, uh, a disgrace. The way our team is playing at the moment, he's worth £111 million to us. Which you know that's a quite that's quite a lot of money. I would go on record as saying I would take 111 million. Uh, Tom Hill says Nazy Pritchard and Closer <laughs> will all go in his opinion. Um, Andy Polly, okay, here's a question. Hi guys, what do you think uh, Pritchard's real value is? What should we hold out for? As I said, I, I think it's going to be around 12. But yeah, I, 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 at the start of the window, I had 15 in my head. Um, Based on what other people go for, his age, his nationality, which makes a difference, and it, you know, if we're selling to an English club because of you know their FIFA Fair Play, whatever it's called, rules where they have to have the right number of English players, blah blah blah. So I, I, I would try and go for 15, but also I do feel like he's going to be worth slightly less in the summer, and we do need to sell. If everyone's seen the accounts, we do need to sell one of our assets. This is it. James Ellis says if Pritchard does go, we won't see the money. It will be the same as uh, Josh being sold, same as Housen. Uh, Russ Watson, I don't think there is any ambition at all. Get rid of the board and Weber. Um, Jonathan Parker, don't panic about the sale of Pritchard. His place can be taken by Vrancic. Sigh. I didn't think that was going to be sarcastic, but then it did end up being sarcastic. <laughs> most, uh, things, uh, most things on social media to do with Vrancic <laughs> are sarcastic. Um, <clears throat> Darren Stevenson, well, while we still have a slim chance of promotion, it would be crazy to let Pritchard go. I, I mean, that, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because there is still hope that Norwich can do something this season. So should there be? <sighs> Look, just let's just look at the table there. I, I think I think realistically the playoffs are gone. We're nine points nine points Is it off. Nine? Yeah, nine. Yeah, so we're, we're we're nine points off, and you know goal difference wise we're minus five compared to plus nine as well. So call it call it call it a four game swing. And you're looking at you're looking at sides that are picking up. You know, a point and a half, two points a game, uh, two points on average a game. And so to actually make that up, you've got to go on this uh, a ridiculous run, which let's face it we've never looked like doing over the course of the season. We'll get stuck into the tables a bit in a moment too um, to, to have a look at elsewhere as well. Um, Stuart Gary selling our top talent to Huddersfield. How times have changed. Neil Austin couldn't Cantwell do a job alongside Madders? Don't know. I haven't seen him play. It's a bit of an issue. It's a bit of an issue. Um, Martin Harvey might end it here. Imagine how Leeds felt for years. There we go. That's a nice way to end, isn't it? I, I have no doubt we were going to speak uh, a lot more about transfer rumours. Is there anyone we missed? Anyone missed you definitely want to talk about? You've got 30 seconds. Well, from our, our yep. outgoing... Or in. Or in. We haven't even spoken about ins. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know who it would be name-wise, but as I say, for, for me, the, the number one piece of business has to be shaking it up, up top. We need... We, if he's only going to play one up front, we need a different kind of striker um, who's willing to run around like Cam in the channels. And I don't think height and, and strength is, is an issue with the way we play. I, I would go for a small, nippy guy in League One or League Two and invest as much as we can possibly afford whilst filling a hole elsewhere. I'd, I'd, I'd look for width. I think what we miss actually is that pace and width outside. And I think Madison and Pritchard have shown they can play together. But actually, we do look, particularly I think Pinto against Millwall was a lone figure up and down on the right-hand side. And actually to have some genuine width on the, on the right would be would be a huge plus. I think that's where it's a shame that it doesn't seem to be working for Marley Watkins at the moment. And also... The guys just don't seem to fancy Yannick Wiltshire, which is the way it seems to be working out at the moment. Um, so there we go. Speaking of which, we'll see what happens uh, over the course of the evening. Uh, what else have we got here? Stephen Noakes. MB, these boys should be on all the time. They talk a good talk. Well done, boys. That's, you, you two, you two. Take the praise and run. Uh, Barry Newman. <laughs> uh, Barry Newman. Oliveira has ego issues and his own agenda. Frustrating as he is technically uh, gifted. We've got lots more questions there, but I think we need to move on. So let's play the rumour mill sting, Dan. <laughs> Cheers, Dan. I never know if I'm looking at you and I might be looking live down the camera. Yeah, ring the bell, why not? <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. That was a lot of transfer talk, wasn't it? 
A lot of transfer talk. Let's have a, a lighter mood now, shall we? Um, let's have some real fun with the game everyone is probably talking about somewhere. Uh, Dan. Again. <laughs> Yes, it's Flip the Bird. Now, last week's return saw Pete Rogers and Alex Ware pull out a pair of fives, but in our reduced time slot of 30 seconds, that represented respectable scoring and may mean the leaders' scores could be under some serious threat before the season is done. So, Tom and Steve, it's over to you guys. Uh, you have 30 seconds to flip as many... Oh, I've written it down here. To flip the largest pile of pink and beer mutts that you can muster with one hand. There you go. That's the official garble, gobbledygook. I'll try and com commentate. Uh, the winner gets a much prized selfie with Wesley Moulihan and will forever be deemed more Robert Flick than Flicky Van Volswinkel. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, well, hello. Are we getting, we're getting, what is this? What is this? It is a competition. I don't know. What, you know, you've got. A, oh, wow. I've never, we've never seen this, have we? We've never seen this. Uh, Dan, how are you looking? You ready? Three, two, one, go. Away you go, gents. Tom's, um, Tom looks like he's been pre you know, working this out. He's already disappointed. Steve's managed on to two. Uh, uh, Tom there on three and, and on four on Swift, but he's going to have to relay them all out in a moment. Steve's just going quietly about his business. Yeah, this, is, this is nuts. You're going to take these guys apart. These two have been practicing. I'm not buying this. You've, you've been doing this all week. We've had you booked in since before Christmas. I reckon you've had a month's training at this. Steve's just lapping them all up. Tom's got well beyond, he's almost got his drink. And we've got a load there, a load there, Three, two, four, five, six, seven. It was seven there. And Steve just caught those, so add the one on, because you caught them. I think that's generally how we do it. Oh, they did get a bit confused there. Uh, right. Count. I mean, that's one, ridiculous. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's crazy. That's as many as we had in a minute. That's for Steve. Well done. Round of applause from. from <laughs> I've just, just, just run away with it. Tom, we've got them on the floor here. One, two, three, oh, four, two five, four. six, seven, eight. Eight, eight. Ten. What a colossal effort. Well done, guys. Um, you're free to take a selfie with Wesley Moulihan, Steve. Uh, she's been staring at me all evening. Yeah. Which, um, and that probably helped you focus, I guess. Well, uh, no, it didn't. No. <laughs> Put me off, if anything. Um, well, we're going to need it. Sean's going to have to get ready with a new leader on the leaderboard. Uh, who was it? It was Richard Hancock and Greg Downs, who both grew up in pubs. And... Uh, Thing. Oh, and uh, and um, did you grow up in a pub, Steve? Is my first question. I've spent a lot of a lot of my life in in pub scenarios, shall we say? Okay. Yeah. Which is why my liver is. <laughs> well, there we go. That's, that's good enough. Uh, this technique, um, Tom, did it did it work out as you planned? Um, it did until uh, it all went wrong as I, I as as I, I pushed a load over the side of the table. It was disappointing. You didn't knock Steve's beer over, so it could have been worse. It could it could have been a lot worse, yeah. Uh, should we have a sting? Dan sting? It really is the game that keeps giving. <laughs> Thanks everyone for that. Right, uh, there were no championship games at the weekend of course, so I know we've touched on it, but let's have a look and remind ourselves of how the table looks ahead of the forthcoming return of league action. Wolves look untouchable at the top, like Steve did at Flip the Bird, owned in no small part to Ryan Bennett and John Reddy, of course. Derby are flying high, and Gary Rowett has signed a new contract following Stokes' interest. Funny that. Uh, meanwhile, Cardiff, Sheffield United, and Ipswich have lost ground. The closing pack isn't too far behind, while Bristol City lost the first leg of their Carabao Cup semi final 2 1 at Manchester City last night. City had made up some places and could yet return to the top half of the table soon if they can maintain their form and arguably their players. Bolton have improved while the revivals at Sunderland and Hull have proved short-lived. Wednesday have appointed well-travelled Bundesliga boss Josh Luhukai as their new manager. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, while Nottingham Forest have brought in ex-Borough boss Ita Karanka. So what are the championships return this weekend? Well, it comes back with a bang and the Sheffield Derby at Bramall Lane. United are City's next opponents at Carrow Road on Saturday week. The leaders travel to freshly taken over Barnsley while Ipswich hosts Leeds in the FA Cup exit derby. Forest Villa is the late kickoff to round off the weekend. It is worth adding at this point too that the FA Cup fourth round... <laughs> Says, I say that, uh, it takes place uh, the last weekend of January when City are due to travel to Brentford, who have already been knocked out. So from that point on, maybe not Norwich, but there will be some, uh, uh, some more games in hand probably uh, in the championship table. Uh, we touched a little bit on, Nor on how you saw Norwich and um, how far they should be looking up uh, probably. What do you make of the new appointments, Forrest Karanka? I thought that was quite an interesting one. 
Yeah, I, mean, he, I didn't think he would be out of work long just because he, he did do such a good job at Borough. Um, they didn't play the, the most attractive football in the world and they did have a, a slightly interesting way of going about seeing out victories. But um, yeah, I, I, for me, that was the one where I thought, OK, I can see some upward, upward progress from, from where they've been so far. Whereas Wednesday, you know, you'd imagine them to get into the top half. You always get a bit of a manager bounce, etc. Um, but, but yeah, for me, I thought, thought Forrest would be the one who I expect to really go places now. I think, I mean, my family are actually Middlesbrough um, fans, season ticket I'm so, holders. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so are they. I think. That must have been fun at time. Wembley. Absolutely. Oh, brilliant. Met them on Wembley way beforehand. So, uh, <laughs> but not, and after? You know, not, not afterwards. No, surprisingly not. They skulked back home. But I think, um, I mean, talking about Ito Karanka, they have polarised views about job that he did there I think it'll be interesting to see what Pulis does at Middlesbrough because I mean he's built a reputation for keeping clubs up and avoiding relegation but whether he, he can do a job there what are they two points off I think he'll keep the them player. in the championship yeah <laughs> <laughs> well I mean my next question was going to be who are you willing on away from Norwich but I guess you've kind of answered that question have you Steve well, I, well, the thing is, I like I like it when we're in the same league as Borough because I, we travel up to Teesside and they come down here for a chance to have a get together. But you know, I, I've, I've got a soft spot for them purely because of my cousins. But um, Tom, who are you willing on? And it doesn't have to be at the top end; it could be at the bottom. Uh, Leeds, just because of Dirty Leeds. Yeah, I've, I've always I, I like Leeds. So. Oh, Jesus. How did I not? Right, well, I'm not asking I that question again. There, I lived there five years. I lived around the, I lived around the back of the Rhinos ground for five years, so I've got a bit of affinity with the Leeds clubs. All right, well, we'll, we'll let you off on that one uh, for now. Uh, right, let's have a look ahead to Saturday, shall we, in the Canaries' trip to Bristol City, a Bristol City side that was in top form but has now lost its last four matches. Admittedly, they were Wolves, Villa, Watford and Manchester City. But still, this is a really curious time to play Bristol City, isn't it? Well, I think the fact that they've still got something to play for in the Cup maybe helps us. Um, I can't help but think that that is still going to be on their minds. Had they been knocked out, then it would be full focus back on the league again, wouldn't it? So the fact that, you know, I was saying knocked out, if they'd, if they'd been a 3 4 nil loss, then they, would, they wouldn't be that potential carrot. They will feel, I think, back at Ashton Gate with um, only a goal that they need to make back. City, it was only towards the end of the game where City really were able to really pile the pressure on. So, And they scored first, didn't they? I mean, so I, I think it's a really good time to, to play them. I, I think that if we're going to have to play someone towards the, towards the top echelons of the table, in between a, a, a couple of, um, in between a cup replay play is probably the best time. But they'll gain, they'll gain a lot of confidence as well from that, from that cup result, won't they? So, you know, I mean, looking at the table again, they, they would look at the table and they would expect three points on, on Saturday, I'm sure. I mean, it's it's interesting what's gone on there, really, because I remember when we both when we when Norwich went there in in March, it ended up being Alec Neal's last game. They, the fans were all chanting for Lee Johnson's exit. They'd had enough, and that season had gone completely awry. Yet they seem to have built it really steadily, and they've got money. So you know, they they've had the money and they're using it really really patiently. Completely different to what normally happens when clubs are owned and there's a lot of money around and he's he's doing a brilliant job they were chanting the owner's name during the game and I th- and it did strike me the difference between uh, that and we've, what we had we've a, done that on occasions yeah, haven't we to be what, fair what, yeah. what we had uh, a couple of games ago but um, yeah I, he, other than wearing um, ridiculous coats I, I'm not an, an expert on, on Johnson and the way he wants to play I did I was really taken with Bristol City though um, uh, Patterson is a hell of a player, uh, really, really enjoyable to watch. Um, Bobby Reid again looks really dangerous, and the sort of striker I wish we had, uh, with a bit of guile and, and and buying little free kicks here and there from really experienced international centre backs, etc. And he, he was getting free kicks, and, and they couldn't deal with him. And, and Patterson was running rings around him. I, the, my 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 main concern for Norwich is we play a really, really bad, slow version of what Man City do in terms of possession football, um, with less skill and less ability, um, and they were able to deal with Man City doing it well so the, 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 the argument of we're going to make we're going to tire them out by making them shuffle side to side side to side watching us go backwards and forwards I don't think it's going to happen I don't think we're going to have as much of the ball as we would like uh, and I think they're going to find it far too easy to, do, to, to, to watch us play in front of them but they'll surely have a different mindset though won't they I mean they'll approach they'll approach a game against Norwich City very differently than they would against Man City so you know th- their game plan may well change I think depending on how Farker sets up 
I think we got hope. I mean, the, the, the club should be, or the, the team should be full of confidence on what they've done. And I think we've got hope. We've got hope in every championship game, really. Um, the, but, like I say, that, that, that's my... The positive is that I think they've got some tired legs from last night and that, that was that one obviously there's not going to be many changes you'd, you'd imagine for, for Saturday because it's an important league game for them. Um, but I, I, the, my, my fear is actually the game plan in terms of how much the ball they think they'll have might stay the same but the way that you would defend us is the same way you would defend Man City so I don't think they need to work on the training ground in terms of shuffling side to side and being patient when you have the ball Interesting you mentioned Bobby Reid Bristol City were apparently looking for a striker they were looking at who to recruit and one of their analysts went look at all these stats for Bobby Reid let's convert him into a striker and boom they from in, yeah, it's the way it works isn't it the way it works right you guys are manager let's rattle through these uh, shall we nice and quickly uh, we've got you to pick your 11s should you be in the dugout for Norwich City on Saturday could still happen don't ever rule it out uh, Dan who should we speak to first Tom, let's have a look at your 11 then. Okay, so I've gone with the back five because I, well, again, my extensive scouting of Bristol City that I did this week on the telly, um, they uh, they are going to have a lot of the ball. Um, they, they do a lot of interplay um, just in front of the back four, Patterson in, in particular, and, and therefore I, I feel that the, the, the back three with you know with the wing backs has served us really well of late and therefore I think would be a good uh, foil to that um, I don't think you can look anywhere other than Teti and Tribal for, for a midfield two you know we are a different team when those two are playing and, and, and ha- at least half fit in Teti's case um, likewise I think Murph has, has, has really earned the fact that he's now getting ovations rather than jeers when he's when he's walking off the pitch he, he has turned his form around himself um, and should be applauded for that Madison is first name on the team sheet um, along with Gunn who I didn't bother mentioning um, and I, I would go Jerome that's partly because I'm hoping by Saturday we'll have sold Nelson and, and, and presumably Pritchard you've sold Pritch have you? oh yeah I'm assuming Pritch is gone look at that and uh, you did put Madison slightly more central than I put him on that graphic because that's where he would play and I, and I think the jam Jamal Lewis is I can't remember someone coming into a team and being that brilliant at that age for, for a long time other than perhaps Madison other than that it would be Jamal Lewis get claiming all the headlines he's been superb we, could have, real we could have spoken about Jamal Lewis a lot tonight definitely and we will do for the rest of the season uh, Steve let's have a look at your 11 shall we I mean it's pretty dare I say I, I didn't do extensive scouting I, I went for a very lazy you've traditional concentrated approach. on yourself haven't, haven't you I? I've been flipping uh, beer mats all week just <laughs> in, in preparation yeah, yeah. Um, I mean for me the, the real question is like do you stick with the back three um, and for me, I, I, I struggle with not having a striker, whether it's Jerome. I mean, I've gone for Oliveira despite slagging him off earlier. <laughs> but um, I think Murphy, Madison and Pritchard, as well as they played against Chelsea, I think they benefit from having a focal point in attack. I think they get more space and, and the better chance to create. So, um, yeah, I went for big Nelfs up front. Spot on, top stuff. Right, let's rattle through a few uh, questions, shall we, before we, before we go. Uh, oh, Dan, you've moved nice and close. There we go. Uh, um, Sam Walden, I was disappointed Norwich didn't go for it in the last 15 against Chelsea. Performance-wise, it was better. Uh, Damien Blanchard says, 30 quid to go to Stamford Bridge, not for me. What if Norwich win? I'll be really pleased. Uh, it, it's not going to happen. You'll be watching it on BBC as well, I suppose. Eh? Uh, Damien uh, Watson, Pritchard, if he stays, will add to his value, not lose it. The lad is quality. The more he plays for us, the more suitors he will have in the summer. Uh, Barry Newman, Shane Long on loan. He hasn't put a question mark. I've added it. I'd, I'd, I'd be all right with that. It'd be a lot of money. Ne- never going to happen. I mean, we're trying to trim the wage bill, yeah. and he's probably a higher earner than anyone at the club with another 30, 40 grand on top. <laughs> never going to happen. Okay, well, Ben Trafford, is Narky Wells playing, or Nicky Wells, playing for Huddersfield? Could be worth a shout. And he is still at Huddersfield, don't No, no, no he's not. Is he? Is he? No, he's moved on, is he? He's moved, moved on? on. I'm not sure where. Burnley. He's at Burnley, is it? It's Burnley? Oh, well, let us know if you know where Nicky Wells is, because I can't remember. I'm sure they sold him. Where is he? I should know that. Uh, Andrew Law, why is Tom better prepared for this game? than the podcast he hosts uh, I don't know but you're going to get really difficult questions on the next Long Come Norwich podcast yeah Andrew <laughs> um, Darren Stevenson uh, yeah, didn't Wells go to Burnley well done thank well done. you Darren We're, thanks for that I thought, I thought that was the case uh, I sh- and, and he has commented that further down so I should have just read it but there we go there's a lot of things to do uh, Matthew Johnson undecided whether or not Farker wants width or not uh, Half says he doesn't want width but the shape doesn't work without it that's an interesting discussion point. Uh, what else have we got here? Jason McDonald, we can't sell Nelson without bringing another striker in. Just Jerome up front on his own for the season. Goals, win games, and Cam doesn't get them. I would, I would suggest if Cam is sold, you won't see a replacement. If they sell Nelson, I think you will. Because there'll be some money. There you go. 
I think we're there. Last questions. Uh, what have I got? Oh, yes, of course, Sheffield United. We're off next week because of the Chelsea replay, so we don't get to talk about the Sheffield United game. So in two words, Sheffield United, I think Paddy, my esteemed colleague, called it the disrespect derby, which I quite liked. Is it, is it that? Is it that? A little bit of beef from last time, wasn't it? I just, yeah. I just hope that their coach driver arrives before the game and doesn't <laughs> encounter like roadworks and, and traffic. It's bizarre how bitter they they were uh, about that, g- given the fact that it's not like it's the only game they've lost all season, but they are still banging on about it and still bringing up things like that. As recently as this week, I saw someone retweet um, a bitter blade about that. Uh, yeah, very very odd. I think that's one of those kind of uh, rivalries that's kind of one way. <laughs> I think they've got a lot more animosity for us than we're just like, so, you know, we should have to win against you, deal with it. Well, let's hope there's less animosity than they managed to show at Bramall Lane during the game, which wasn't welcome and shouldn't uh, ever be seen again. Uh, key man for Norwich City, come Bristol City. Madison. I think it's simple as that. Yeah, Madison, for the reason that he, we need him to reassure everyone that we can afford to lose Pritch and, and still be half decent to watch. Beautifully put, brilliantly. And a prediction then, finally. Tom? We are going to lose 2-1. Steve, are going to nick it 1-0. I, I, have a, I have a little sneaky sense that they might win on Saturday. Don't ask me why, but that's it. We're done for tonight. Gents, what a stellar effort. Well done. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, remember, you can catch this show and all our superb Norris City com- uh, coverage over at the Pinkin Facebook page, where we are live at the moment, uh, the Pinkin YouTube channel, where the show will be on uh, very shortly, or, of course, Pinkin.com for all the latest news. Uh, thanks to all the crew, to Tom and Steve for joining us. Much appreciated. To everyone here at the Wall Pack uh, who gave Tom his free drink. Uh, and, of course, to you for watching and getting involved. Uh, I will be at Ashton Gate on Saturday for City's Championship Returns. So if you see me around say hello don't swear and um, we'll be back again live in a fortnight's time uh, once again from the wall pack on golden ball street in the center of norwich hopefully uh, and as always if you're nearby then pop in grab a pint and uh, join us for the show uh, until then here's to the canaries rocking the robins good night Bye.